Valentine's Day, a day for love, candy, and flowers. But did you know the origins of this highly commercialized holiday is actually pretty brutal? History tells us that it started around 270 AD when Emperor Claudius II of Rome was struggling to get dudes to join his army. He thought it was because they were too attached to their wives, so he banished marriages and engagements. A holy priest named Valentine went against the emperor and performed them in secret. When this was discovered, he was sentenced to death by beheading, and that was carried out on February the 14th. For his great service, he was named a saint after his death, and supposedly a part of his skull is housed in the Church of Santa Maria in Rome, adorned with a crown of flowers. And this, my little love birds, is what we are painting today. Using the picture you just saw as a guide, you can take white paint and a small round brush and outline the skull. We are trying to make this look like a fossilized skull so it's not your typical white. What you want to do is use a sponge and different variants of brown and tans to give it that worn in look. And here's a really good tip of something not to do. Oh. Just spilled my water everywhere. <laughs> yeah, body painting 101, keep your water in the container. All right, take the sponge and flip it around. Use this side and some white paint to highlight areas of the skull that you want to stand out. Another tip it's also easier if you use a small spray bottle full of water to wet your sponge rather than dunking the sponge in a water container. That way it's far less saturated and then you don't run the risk as much of running your colors together. Now use an oval brush and dark brown paint to mark in the areas that we want more contrast. As the water starts to dry off of your paintbrush, use that opportunity to smudge in the lines so they don't look so stark. And don't forget to paint in the grooves that show where the teeth are going to meet each other. Continue to use the oval brush, the dark brown paint, and white paint to really make the eye sockets stand out and also look receded. Now use the black paint to completely cover your eyelids and underneath as well, and then seal that in with black eyeshadow. Now take the same eyeshadow brush and lightly dust it over certain areas of the skull that you want to look a little more dingy. Mark in the black hole where the nose would go and you can use your own as a guideline. Using white to outline black will actually make the black area look even more receded. So this is really helpful when you want the area to look like it's void of something. Go ahead and paint the teeth in white, but you are going to go back over it with the tan and browns to make them match with the rest of the fossilized skull. Unfortunately, Mr. Valentine did not have the straightest of teeth, so I stayed true to that and even left in the baby gap in between the two front teeth. Also, don't forget the little tiny holes that you can usually see in most skulls. They're called foramina. They allow nerves and blood vessels to pass through. A very small but pretty important detail. Don't forget to use black eyeliner in the tight line to get rid of any little bit of pink left in your eye area. However, we do want to save some of that pink for the flowers on the crown. Now because I was following the photo, the shape of these flowers aren't typical because they're supposed to mimic dead flowers instead of live ones. So the coloring is actually going to be a lot darker in the end. What you want to do is mark in the colors of the natural flower first and then add browns and blacks over the top of it to make them look dead and dusty. For the inner parts of the flower, use black eyeshadow because it's not as heavy, and then use black paint to outline everything. Continue to mark the outer edges of the skull and the teeth with the black paint. Fill all of the outside with black, leaving the mouth area open so there is room to make the blood drips. Try your best to match the lines from your chin down to your chest so that they look more uniform. Now 
Now, it wouldn't be Valentine's Day as we know it if it weren't for a little heart of some sorts, so I went ahead and added that in. You are now going to outline the blood drips in black the same way we did with the skull and the flower crown. Now you can completely fill in all the outside of those lines with black to make way for the illusion. You can stop right there, or you can go the extra mile and add a little more oomph by getting some fake blood and adding it to the blood streaks. This will only make your photograph pop even more. Now fill in the rest of the chest area with black and you are good to go. All right, here is our final St. Valentine skull look. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. You can find me at Bengal Queen on Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter. You can now also find me live painting on Twitch. All the links are down below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.